you're seeing is really only about a half of a percent of the rubble that was and debris that was removed from the World Trade Center site. So it's less than 1% of the physical remains of the site. You know, here were these two vertical cities and you are seeing the kind of, you know, wounded horizontal victims in a way, just lying down. I think people are very struck by the horizontality of it. This is an incredible piece because this is cold compression. We've been having this debate back and forth just about being very careful, although we recognize the kind of awful beauty of some of the, the steel and some of the <clears throat> what we see, that we want to make sure that we're not falling into the trap of making aestheticizing the relics of this tragedy and also not presenting it as an art museum might, you know, by putting it on some kind of venerated pedestal. Some, you know, some of the planters were on the Church Street side and, and did survive, as did some of the original benches. We're actually thinking possibly of bringing some of the benches back for the con more contemplative areas of the museum. So, you know, here, here you're seeing the famous, what's left of the, of the Calder Stabile that was on the plaza. You know, we, one of the things we've been thinking about with this particular piece would be to bring the pieces back together in some kind of meaningful silhouette of their original um, ensemble placement, um, but, uh, but avoiding making a new piece of art out of it. I think that would be really wrong. That would feel really wrong. I think there were 1,800 vehicles that were first, you know, rescue equipment. And this is a piece that is almost definitely going to come back if you just look and see side, I mean, you can see um, th this most likely will be an encased object because even though we're 99.9% .9 co confident that there's nothing coming out of there that is in any way going to be an irritant, we just want to, the, the public won't necessarily believe us, so we, we actually believe we need to encase this particular object. Some of the men who drove this, these vehicles to the World Trade Center site who survived had no idea their vehicle had ever been preserved for potential museum use. And we're discovering um, in making very gentle overtures, some of them are still so traumatized they don't want to talk. And this is the case with the two um, EMS guys who drove this particular ambulance. The reason we think this truck is very powerful is because the kind of bifurcation of if you look you know, to the left, it looks un virtually unharmed. If you look to the right, it's obviously been distressed and damaged and literally for us it's the quirk of fate that day you turned left you lived you turned right you died the taxi cab we actually were able through the taxi and limousine commission ultimately to locate who the driver was he was a polish gentleman he survived he was so traumatized he left and moved back to poland so we're, we're now inside the tent which holds some of the motors that were salvaged from the almost 200 elevators that were in the service, the, the Twin Towers, and we want to be able to use them to tell the stories of what happened to people in the elevators that day because there were very dramatic stories of people trapped in the elevators who lived, and unfortunately 200 people trapped in elevators who didn't live but who were able to get messages out to loved ones in some cases. Then we're also seeing, you know, components of the antenna from the North Tower. Most likely this particular piece, which is sort of looks like the Mercury space capsule, will come back to that same part of the museum where we're trying to include some of these big ambivalent objects. Warner Brothers store, we had found that uh, this sign was just kind of an incredible survival. That's all folks, you know. When word got out that this was going to be most likely the last ceremonial piece of steel, the thousands and thousands of individuals who'd been participating in the rescue recovery efforts started to mark it. We've been trying to document all of the markings, all of the signatures on it. 
there may be as many as by the time you get down to the bottom where the volunteers came onto the site and began to sign you know as many as a thousand uh, signatures we've been trying to selectively go into these different communities and do oral histories to find out you know <clears throat> what motivated you to mark the column what did it mean to you but then kind of pull their stories out from there and it's been really fascinating